there, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. In this video, I want to show you the Magnetospeed V3 chronograph. This is a tool I plan on using a lot. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview, do a quick unboxing, and we'll do some shooting with some firearms so that you can see how it works. Let's get straight into it. So here I have the, the V3 unit. I also have the rail adapter for use with semi-auto pistols like Glocks that have the lower Picatinny rail. And uh, I also have the data cable and there's a bunch of advanced functionality here. We won't get into that into this video. This is kind of more of a getting started. Don't worry, there'll be plenty of follow-ups here. So I haven't even used this yet. It's, as you can see here, it's been riding around on my truck. I've been waiting for the right time to do this video. Um, I did read the instructions. Lots of good info uh, here. You can see right on the front, it's for barrel diameters of a half inch to two inches and muzzle brakes up to two and a half inch diameter by three inch length. You can use this with sound suppressors as well. There's a bunch of info in the manual that uh, guides you through the process of attaching it to the firearm, the different spacers and components, uh, which we'll go through here. So actually, let's start with the bayonet itself. Uh, you might have seen my Sporter video, the Magneto Speed Sporter is their entry level chronograph. This is the high end unit, so it has a fully detachable cord. You can see there's a six foot cord here, and there's also a four foot retractable cord, which is really nice. You go all the way to the end, click it, back down. I really like that because you can tailor the length of the cord to your shooting situation not have a bunch of extra cord, you know, flopping around. We've got, uh, this is a heat shield so that if you're using a sound suppressor, it doesn't uh, melt the strap. If you're shooting a whole bunch of rounds and your suppressor gets really heated up. There's a bunch of different uh, adapters and, and rubber pads here. Variety of accessories here. We've got the actual control unit and display here. As you can see, it comes with a micro SD card because this has a data logging function. You can record your shots into a log.csv file and open that directly in Excel, which I think is a great feature and I'm really actually looking forward to using that. As you can see, it comes with a nine volt battery. You can also use two CR123 batteries, which I think is awesome. That means I can either have nine volt batteries or CR123 batteries with me and it's gonna work with either one. Now I use a Streamlight and that means I have CR123 batteries around, uh, so that's definitely handy. It also comes with the micro SD card adapter, so you can plug that straight into the reader on your laptop if you have that equipped there. Some mounting hardware for some of the spacers that you can attach to the Bayo unit. And then finally, the alignment rod. So this is a quarter inch, gives you your quarter inch rise. Basically, the bottom of the bullet should have a, about a quarter inch air gap between that, that bottom of the bullet and the top of the bayo where the sensor is. You can go down to an eighth of an inch in some circumstances. A uh, quarter inch gives you a, a little bit more leeway so that you have less likelihood of, of hitting the bayo unit itself. But if you line it up properly, that's not, uh, not gonna be a problem at all. So why don't we mount this to a gun or two or three and let's see how this thing works. So attaching the bayonet to your rifle is, is really easy. I'm gonna show the Ruger Precision rifle here, which has more or less a straight profile on its barrel. So the first thing you need to do is determine the number of spacers and which spacers you're gonna need. Here I've got a thick plastic and a thin plastic spacer. Those can be held into the bayo unit with, with screws that come with the kit. They're optional, so I'm not gonna use them here since I'm experimenting. And then I've got a, a thick rubber pad. So you need to release the strap enough to slip the unit over, get it to approximately where you want it, and then push on the release buckle here, and then make sure that your clamp down screw is backed out fairly good so that you can then cinch it down. And when you get it, when you feel some tension there, you should have it be relatively firmly attached. And then the last step is to put the, the end of the strap through the retaining slot. Okay, last step, we're gonna check with our rod. We should be basically at the bottom of the opening in the muzzle here. And I'm a, I'm a little bit closer 
but uh, but we're gonna we're gonna give that a try. I think that's actually gonna work pretty good. You can go down to an eighth of an inch. It's suggested that you use a quarter for you know having a margin of safety. Then we take the right angle cord, plug it into the end of the bayo unit, plug the other end into the display and control unit, and you can see here we're ready to go. So let's say, take some shots with the Ruger Precision Rifle. Okay, let's shoot some 6.5 Creedmoor. What I have here is some Hornady factory ammunition, 120 grain AMAX 6.5 Creedmoor, and I'm using the Ruger Precision Rifle, so let's see how this is gonna do. All right. So it looks like we got uh, all five shots. If we, if we use this up and down control, we can see here that we scroll through the shots. Max 2904, min 2876. Uh, standard deviation of 11.7 .7 feet per second. That is pretty amazing. So I'm really happy with that. And that gives me something to try and duplicate uh, with my hand loads. But what I think we should do next is try a handgun. So you can use the V3 with the strap system if you have a plain barrel on say a revolver or something like that. But with a semi-auto, since the slide is sliding back and forth, you obviously can't have a strap on the top. So with the rail adapter, you can slide the bail right onto the bottom of a semi-auto that has a lower Picatinny type rail system like this Glock 20 I have here. So what I did was I removed the strap hardware, I removed the spacers, you install this, this red lower base, and then these Picatinny rail grabbers just, uh, just snap right over the, the top of the unit here on the bayo. You can then kind of snap it onto the bottom of your your semi, and in this case, on this Glock, it just fits perfectly in there. There's the, the milled recess on the bottom of the Picatinny rail, and that's where this rod goes. And if we take our rod and do a quick check, we can see it actually lines up perfectly with, uh, with the bottom of the muzzle opening. So we should be, when we plug everything in, ready to roll. Looks like we just have enough clearance there. We're gonna plug in our cord, and I believe, yes. Okay, I cleared my shots, so we are ready to go. Let's see how this does with 10 millimeter. All right, let's see how the Glock 20 is gonna do. I've got my own hand loads here. These are 10 millimeters with 155 grain Hornady XDP hollow points. Looks like we're ready to go. So let's fire off of a round of five. All right, let's see how we did. Okay, so it looks like, looks like we got all five shots and we can scroll again through the results here. <laughs> Standard deviation of 7.4, that is pretty amazing. 1276 max, 1257 min. So I think the Glock fans out there are gonna assume that that's, uh, that's the pistol. I'm gonna say it's my, my hand loads here. Uh, it's really easy to use the menus on this unit. We can go down and clear series shots, for instance. We've got to confirm, go ahead and do it. So we can see it's really easy to use with both pistols and rifles. This uh, Picatinny adapter, you can also use that with uh, a rifle that has a handguard, say, that has a Picatinny adapter as long as the diameter is in, in the right range. Well, so far I'm really liking the Magneto Speed V3. It's gonna be an invaluable tool. It's gonna have a lot of different applications for shotgun, for handgun, and for rifle. I'm looking forward to doing things like trying to match the performance of that Hornady 6.5 Creedmoor factory ammo that I showed. I'm really happy with my 10 millimeter reloads in the Glock 20, that's awesome. I'm also looking forward to doing things like ladder tests so that I can 
vary charge weights and look at all of the data so that I can maximize performance and maximize precision for given rifle and given ammo that I'm loading. So don't forget, I also have my Magneto Speed Sporter video, same basic technology, a lot of the same features at a much lower price point. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any of the action on ultimatereloader.com, please subscribe to my channel. I got more videos coming. We've got data logging. We've got other accessories like uh, the phone interface that I'm going to be showing. So make sure you're subscribed. Until then, happy shooting and happy reloading.